Once upon a time, there was a little boy who loved plants and started his lifelong passion of collecting plants and landscaping. Fast forward 50 years later, we come to see his exquisite collection and paradise that he had built. Here, tropical plants gather happily and the gigantic ferns drape down gracefully, reaching towards the fishes swimming below. This oasis sits in the heart of bustling Bangkok, the city of angels which is known much more for its vibrant street life and traffic jams. Now let's go and hunt down this lush century that I've heard so much about. We arrive now at the Ban Kampu Tropical Gallery and Cafe. Walking in, you are instantly transported to a different world. The landscaping here is so well done, mimicking mother nature that is almost like hiking in the forest. In this episode, we're going to be spoiled and inspired by the collection of plants, how to mix and match them to compose the harmonious symphony of nature, and steal some ideas on how to create this piece of paradise back in our own home garden. Ban Kampu Tropical Gallery and Cafe started out as just a nursery 40 years ago by Mr. Suratvano, pictured here with his wife. The man is a central figure amongst the Thai plant community. And about 20 years ago, the gallery and cafe was added, so now one can savor delicious bites while shopping for plants. My kind of Disneyland. This place has hosted many exciting plant events, including arrow shows and ferns competitions. And it is a favorite spot for weddings too, appealing to the couple that is looking to have a more intimate celebration amongst the lush green magical garden. This place is huge, and in the midst of it, there is also a traditional Thai house that's more than a hundred years old, a very cozy setting for the traditional wedding ceremonies. Mr. Surath has two daughters and he is happy that one of them has inherited his love for plants and gardens. The other daughter of his is passionate about food and running the restaurant, so together they make a perfect pair continuing his legacy to run this thriving plant gallery and garden cafe. Hi guys, my name is Irene and welcome to my channel Leafing Around. So we start with what's just right beside me and I see here there is mostly begonias. These, there are some very interesting ones that I've not seen before. Like for example, this one, this has like an escargot sort of spiral pattern. These are a collection of the polka dot begonias. I can't remember what this is, the snow eyes or, or white angel wing. But these polka dots, I always find them really cute. And that's Crackling Rose over there. It's uh, actually black with pink spots. It's one of my favorite. I just recently got my hands on it. It's not so easy to come by, I find. And then there are some of these begonias. It's quite plain uh, on the surface, but look behind it. It's really, really spectacular. The back, the bright maroon. So gorgeous. And there's a lot of furry too. Let's see what else. Oh, this is interesting. This is a like a lettuce. This is a begonia that sort of looked like a lettuce to me. It's kind of really wrinkly. And then we are seeing some pockets of jewel orchids here. Really amazing lines. It's really fine and it's almost as someone had drawn on them. They look like veins. There's more over that side. This is the green one. The ones over that side is red. So I'll just pull up the pot here and then show it to you close up. Really gorgeous. Ah, I'm curious what potting media they are on. So you could see they're on charcoal. So very fast draining media here. Charcoal. And then the roots are actually growing on it. So very nice. Now I know for draw orchids, um, they will be quite happy and charcoal. Here, 
I really like to point out to you the design of this beautiful space and garden. How right from the very bottom of our feet to up over our heads. It's all enveloped in plants. So this is a great plant design because imagine if you're laying everything just down in pots in one layers, you wouldn't get the same effect. So here everything is just simply engulf you in it. I like to start out with this piece of rock in fact. It is just so amazing already. You have the selaginellas and then you have the ferns and you have many other plants and the jewel orchids all growing on them. And also it is fast draining because when something is sitting on a rock, you simply can't accumulate water. So this is giving me ideas. I should start, get a piece of rock, cover it with moss, selaginellas, and then chuck some plants on it. This really reminds me of when I am hiking and I do see a lot of plants just creeping up and living happily alongside rocks. We detour for a little bit. I now take you on a short hike in Borneo so you can see the parallel in nature. Here are all sorts of plants including these gorgeous smoked palms, ferns and homaluminas are growing on rocks. And here I am discovering begonias living on rocks for the first time in nature. And I was very curious, fiddling around to see what media they're growing in. And it looks like they're just clinging to rocks. And if you're lucky, you can even spot a beautiful snake like this one while hiking. And another thing you will realize about good garden design is simply you don't see, you don't really see the pots. So they're very well hidden here. So the plants here, in fact, I can tell you, um, some are on pots, some are not. <laughs> like this one, uh, the Aspicia, it's on a black pot, but it's cleverly disguised when it's put against the rock. And this is a great, great choice of color too. The pink truly pops up against the background. This is Begonia lucerna. And then we have a nice big palm here. I think this is a Joey palm of sort, uh, Joey Magnifica perhaps. This palm needs a good amount of space though. So if you choose to have this, make sure you give that the room for it to blossom. Oh, this is a cake as huge begonia here. It's black. I've never seen this before. I'm quite drawn to black color leaves and this one is huge. I'm curious what it looks like. Oh my God, look at that color underneath. It's amazing. It's so gorgeous. It's so, so huge. Look at the size of the stem. The stem is also red in color. This is Homa Lumina rubicens. Smooth, shiny, plump and cute. Take note, this will be a great addition to your tropical garden because it is also super easy, does well under filter light. This huge leaf here is the Philodendron Maximum and just as its name suggests, it can get really big. So maybe think twice if you have the space for it to mature before you get this baby. And from the biggest, now let's sweep the ground here for the tiniest plants. A well-balanced garden will not just have big, impressive plants, but should have some little gems to reward those that take time to pause. There are things in life that we can only appreciate when we stop and pause, like these little miniature leaves. They have such intricate patterns. They are the jewel orchids, and next to it, we have an array of begonias. Okay, just checking out here what they are growing on. Looks like rocks and moss. Down on the bottom left side here, tiny leaves. I think that's the Begonia kingiana. And this black one, if you know what they are, please let me know. It is so bushy and healthy. The underside of the leaf is red. Reminds me of the Louboutin heels. And do you know that some leaves have this red or purplish undersides to help them reflect light? back up into the leaf. This way, they can maximize light absorption. Then here we have the Begonia Imperialis on my left. And oh, hello again, Jewel Orchid. They, do they flower? Absolutely, but they are much more loved for their foliage. 
than the tiny flowers that they put out. Now let's zoom out. We are now right next to the waterfall. The plants love the humidity. Landscape tip number three will be really to have your own water feature somewhere, somehow, please. The red koi fishes here just brings the garden to life. But if you think that's just too much work, yes, we all can't have such a fancy waterfall and fishes, but perhaps a tiny something like this fountain or jar of water with flowing water would do the trick. The sound of water exudes serenity and completes a garden. Landscape tip number four is to place objects of interest around the garden, like this lovely jar here that have motives of gecko, but what's even more charming is the growth of moss and all kinds of tiny little plants hugging it. Now we leave this spot and move on to the next section. Speaking of next section, I want to drop this next landscaping tip. For a cozy garden vibe, better to create a few separate smaller sections than one big open exposed one. Why? Because when you have a garden where you can see everything from one position, two things happen. First, it feels very finite, like you can see where it ends. Second, you lose that cozy vibes and it just does not intrigue you to walk and explore the area. And here I like to illustrate how you can make your garden cozier. Break up a space into several sections because this does two things. It forces you to walk around your garden and then from any single point, you can't see the entirety of your garden. And so this gives the illusion that your garden is really bigger than it is. As we walk through here, we are greeted by the fern tree and ooh, this lovely patch of red. This is the Calathea crimson. Beautiful deep pink leaves with black borders. A perfect illustration on how to add colors without using flowers in the foliage heavy garden. To maintain their red, you need to give them enough sun. Otherwise, they turn dull and green to maximize your ability to absorb more light. And opposite is the Philodendron Xanadu providing contrast in form with its finger-like leaves stretching forth like it wants to grab something. This is a nice and easy Philodendron, very compact and lovely for landscaping. We have more Calathias here. Some people say that Calathias may have fallen out of fashion, but they have gorgeous patterns. Conditions of these ones are almost perfect. So you can see they enjoy hiding underneath some other taller plants to give it a bit of relief from the harsh sun. Now let's take a step back to zoom ourselves out and appreciate this beautiful sight. I think it makes for a lovely desktop screensaver. Feel free now to pause and screenshot this beautiful view. The second important tip is on the style of garden you want, if it's quite a minimalist one, you can pretty much just use one uh, or two specimen a species of plants and it's looking quite standardized. But if you're looking to curate a very intimate space, then you need all these variation of plants to make that happen. So plants of all shapes and sizes, enveloping you, textures, colors, pops, bit a little bit chaotic, but coming together beautifully. I'm so excited guys. Today I'll be meeting a Thai plant friend in person. Sawadika Kun Monstera Thai Constellation. So how have you been, my friend? I've been really famous right now. Everybody wants me. You look very healthy and beautiful. What's the secret to your beauty? I get all the love and sunshine. And oh. also the B1 and Osmo coat. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, I'm very curious. In Thailand, what are you using in the potting media? Can you share? A bit about the house you live in. What's we we have coconut chips. Okay. And then we mix it with rain tree leaves. Oh wow! And so it's all more more like organic ah. materials. So coconut has and leaves from the rain tree. Very nice. Oh, shall we order some drinks? And while waiting for us to decide what to drink, 
Let's go play homage to the Grandpa Monstera Tycon. I rarely see such a huge one. The leaves look like they're about three feet long. And in case you're worried about the variegated plants reverting, take comfort. This version of the variegated Monstera, the Monstera Tycon, will never lose its variegation and sparkles. In respect for this Grandpa, it takes a lot of love and time to get up to this size. And then here is another collector piece plant. This is the Dressiana. And you could see this beautiful sparkly galaxy like patterns. I'm really, really drawn to leaves like that. It really is amazing. Here is a very large specimen of the Philodendron Florida Golden Dragon. And it's really compact. So if you give it enough room, it will grow all around. It's kind of like a nice circular shape. And if you look inside, it's very, very compact to the growth. So if you give it enough light, I think that it can grow to be very, very lush and compact. I have mine at home that's a little bit more stringy. I think it's trying to look for more light. So bear in mind that if you want your plants to be a lot more compact, do give them enough light so they're not struggling to grow taller to reach for enough sun. This is a very nice piece of uh, philodendron, Angela, 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 or no, sometimes it has changed its name to a tomato film of, of something else. I think this is a hybrid, which gives it this very complex um, sort of structure. It's a hybrid between the philodendron Godii or fun bun and something else that I can't remember what it is. Here we have a fern that I really like. Uh, you do see them around in Thailand a lot, but it's not very common. And this fern is quite interesting. It's quite hot and it's very, very wavy. It's almost like an, a, a dress that's been kind of stitched together. Very nice ribbony sort of effect here. It's very beautiful texture. So if you're looking for something different but still green to pop in your garden, this would be a good choice. Excuse me. How about you? What would you like to drink? I'm lactose intolerant. I cannot drink milk. That's rain water for me. This one for you. This is very good, this coffee. Mm. And here, you have yours too. Hey, be gentle. Whoops, sorry. Plus, I need a lot more water, please. Here you go. this cafe slash gallery where there is a nursery so plants here are for sale guys and let's start to see what we can find first of all first up I think this is Defenbachia Mary Defenbachias are I think an underrated plant they are very easy going and also very very beautiful and take a look at this one I'm not sure if this is a Defenbachia or Aglonema once again these sort of patterns and leaves really, really call out to me. Ooh, hello. I think this is the Anthurium regale. Huge one here. And this is strange. Okay, I've, I'm not familiar with this. This is rather dark, dark colored. And it looks like it's even variegated, this one. Like just one variegated leaf, or I'm not sure if it's um, disease or something else. I can't tell to be honest because all these are the leaves seems to be quite 
dark and green except for that one over there. Um, oh, hello. This one is truly special. Look at that. I have something like that but it doesn't have splotches of um, white. So this one has that sort of army camouflage pattern going but it has also these splotches of white here. And then more Defenbachias. I think this could be the Big Ben. It's a variegated one. Oh, but this is gorgeous. Look at that. So amazing, the patterns. These very, very prominent white against the dark green. So gorgeous. Here, there's a huge Philodendra Esmeralda say that's really caught my eye and it is put on a moss pole. So we know that this is a plant that loves to climb. And here we have the Philodendron Patricia, I believe. And let's see, it is sitting on a basket of quite a lot of cocoa chips here. I guess that it's doing really well here um, in an environment that is sheltered. So what we have here at the rooftop is a transparent roof. So it allows a lot of light in, but then you can control the watering. Now let's see what else we've got. Oh. Okay, so this I've never seen before. I'm not sure if this is a Glunima or a Defenbachia, but look at the pattern. It's really, really one of its kind. This speckles all around and then in the middle, it's like got the splotches of like white paint almost. What else have we got here? Oh, the Anthurium. This Anthurium looks very uncommon to me. First of all, it's unusual shape. To me, it even looks a little bit like it's uh, kind of overweight. Look at it, it's like round and plum. It's got two tiny ears. And that's so cute there. And look at this. I think this is the Gloriosum. I was told it's something called Gloriosum multi because it's got multiple veins. But they have so many names for Gloriosum now. I thought this looked like a dark form. Um, but yeah, I'm told here it's called Glorious and Multi because of this very, very exciting and multiple white veins that it has. Uh, if you want to see in contrast, this would be the more normal Glorious that you have. Glorious and Verde, perhaps. I think that's the name. It just means Glorious and Green. That's a normal type. And then we get all very fanciful up here. So you could see the width of that white vein is much, much bigger here. And a whole family of philodendrons here. Is this the El Chocorid or the, um, what's the very diva one called? I can't remember the name now. Mm. Never mind, it will come back to me later. But let's move on. Oh, okay. Talk about prominent. So, this is another leaf of that same plant that we were looking at. A huge, huge, the biggest leaf of all in this plant. And that's where the white vein really pops in this. Can't get over the Glorism. It's one of my favorite philodendrons. Kopkunka. <laughs> Thank you very much everyone for watching right to the very end. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And so if ever you are in Bangkok, you must have Bon Kong Pu Cafe and your bucket list to visit. So to my next episode, I bid you farewell and please remember to click subscribe and share it with others so that YouTube knows I've made a decent video. Till then, bye-bye.